Hi, everyone. I'm going to talk about prototyping in user-centered design for Drupal today. Uh, a bit about myself. My name is Chloe. Uh, I'm a UX designer and front-end developer at Morphed. Uh, I studied uh, interactive multimedia system design at UTS, and I've been working with Drupal for the past two years. So I ran into this website the other day. and. Uh, can anyone tell me what's wrong with this website? Anything else? <laughs> I mean, what, what's the problem with this website? <laughs> exactly. As a user, I struggle to use it. It's fancy, it's artsy, it's creative, it's totally out of the box. But um, I, as a user, I find big usability problem with it. There are plenty of websites out there that has the similar issue. It looks nice, it's so creative, but it's not for the users. So my topic today is I'm going to talk about this one simple thing we can do to avoid usability problems. Um, first of all, I like to define what prototype is and isn't. And then I'm going to talk about different prototypes and uh, different tools we can use to create them. And finally, I'm going to talk about usability testing, which is the most important part. First of all, what is and what isn't a prototype? Well. Prototypes aren't sketches. Sketches are freehand drawings that we can quickly and easily make to visualize ideas and communicate with others. It is in no way meant to be a model of the final website. According to Bill Buxton, who is the um, principal researcher at Microsoft Research, who's also known for being one of the pioneers in human computer interaction design. He thinks the difference between sketch and the prototype is the following. Sketch is used to explore ideas. It's used to raise a question, to propose a potential solution, to make suggest suggestions, to invite people to come and collaborate with you. While prototypes is to describe a, a solution, to refine and test your design, to answer questions and to, to test, especially usability testing. Uh, secondly, prototypes are not wireframes. Wireframes are visual layout of a website. It doesn't include any functionality of the website. Um, include, it doesn't have animations. It doesn't have clickable navigations. It doesn't have a um, change of page state. It tells you where each component of the page will live. It gives you some insight into the sitemap hierarchy. However, now, as wireframes become interactive, I mean, when I click on the menu, it go take me to another page, then these wireframes become a prototype. Finally, <coughs> prototypes are not mockups. Mockups are visual design of a website. It doesn't include any functionality of the website. Now, what is a prototype? According to the uh, human Human Computer Interaction Handbook. A prototype is a concrete representation of a part or all of an interactive system. What does that mean? Well, the interactive system have three important aspects. The first is the role, which means what role does this <coughs> website play in the user's life, in which way it is useful to them. For example, with PayPal, you, you pay someone. Implementation means um, the functionality of through which component and techniques this website implement its functionality. For example, for Drupal side, we use Drupal, we use PHP, we use HTML, JavaScript. Look and feel refers to the concrete sensory experience a user have when they're using the website. What are they looking at? What do they hear? How do they feel? So a prototype and prototype well, prototype do cover one or two or three of these three aspects. So now the question comes, why do we need prototype? First of all, prototype is to validate, test, and refine our design. 
it is to um, tell us what works and what doesn't before we even start building the site and writing custom modules. It gives developers, designers, and project managers the confidence that whatever they are going to do is going to work based on, based on testing. So once you have a prototype, which has been thoroughly tested. The site builders can just go in and start building the site. And it won't, the final design won't differ much. The second reason we need prototype is we can use it to sell idea. It's always easier to pitch to a client if you have a concrete prototype for them to test on and play with, rather than just trying to tell them in words what you are trying to do. And thirdly, prototype is a great way to spur collaboration. Clients, developers, designers, they can all come together, work on one prototype, feedback directly into the prototype. So now it comes to prototype fidelity. When it comes to fidelity, we talk about low fidelity, high fidelity. But it's actually just one aspect of prototype fidelity. We have many levels of fidelity in prototype. We have visual fidelity, which means how polished this prototype is. Does it look like the final website? <coughs> Interactive fidelity. Does the prototype has the same animation and transition with the final website? Data content fidelity. Does the prototype has the real data and content? And environment fidelity. Does the prototype work on mobile? Does it work on tablet? Well, how does it work on, at home, at work, in different browsers? That's environment fidelity. And there are many other aspects of fidelity. I'm not going to bore you with the details here, but you can see. Uh, however, with the increasing fidelity is the increase of time and money. So in the world of prototyping, it's not always the more the better. For most projects, for some projects, especially um, most projects in agile development, we'll have several versions of prototype iterating from low fidelity to high fidelity. However, in some projects that doesn't have big budget, it's always good enough to start from low fidelity prototype. It's cheap. It's easy to make. It gives very inspirational feedback to the designers because testers don't have to worry about building onto the designer's idea. They don't have to worry about upsetting the designers. They can just say whatever they want to say. And secondly, low fidelity prototype is great for A-B testing. So um, do everyone know what is A-B testing? So a quick explanation. A-B testing is, this, um, is a usability test that uh, we create two versions of UI element and we set a matrix for success. For example, here, uh, we have in, on version A, we have sign up form on the left, um, on the left nav bar behind the page title. On version B, we have sign up form behind the content body on the right hand side of the nav bar. Then we have two randomly distributed users to test on both prototype. In version A, we have 50 signups. In version B, we have 75. That means version B is more effective than version A. So in low fidelity prototype, A-B testing is easy because it's easy, quick, and cheap to move around the UI element. Thirdly, um, low fidelity prototype allow testers and designers to focus on user flow and the task flow, rather than being distracted by colors, typographies, and images. However, there are times when we need to use high fidelity prototypes. That's when we need detailed feedback on colors and typographies and so on or we're trying to test the effectiveness of animation and transitions. So different type of prototypes. Paper prototype, by far the most common one and the most easy to make one. No learning curve, everyone can sketch. And uh, there are softwares nowadays that allow you to uplo upload your drawings <coughs> into the computer and build interactions based on that. I have here a quick example paper prototype I created. 
So if you're interested, you can come to me afterwards and we can, um, I can show you how it works. So basically, we use um, post-it or paper to indicate um, page overlays and uh, markers to indicate a uh, UI element. And of course, we have digital prototype. Digital prototype, it, it helps us to easily create high fidelity prototypes. It's very easy to share and collaborate with others. Once you put it on a server, everyone have access to it. And it's great for organized online testing. I'm going to briefly talk about some tools I use for digital prototyping. First one is actually, um, I'll show you a demo. Bear with me for a second. So here is a digital prototype we have created earlier for a client using Aksha. Um, as you can see, we can have different um, page, menus, drop downs, um, select box, go to different pages. It's very slow. We, ha we can have web forms maps and so on. It's very easy to create um, high interactivity fidelity prototypes in Axure. Just to show you that I'm not lying about it, <coughs> I'm going to quickly create one. So this one is I created earlier. Um, it's about page. This is the user interface of Axure. So I'm going to create a new page. So I just click here, a new page, call it person page. And then come here. I have predefined he header and footer, so I don't have to do it the second time. A heading here. image, a very ugly page. Now, I want to create some interaction. I want it to, to happen that um, when I click on this, it goes to the next page. So I create on click event, open link, open to person page. And now I preview it. When I click on it, it goes to my very ugly page. That's it. It's that easy. The second tool I like to use is Invasion. The difference between Invasion and Axure is you, you create UI element in Axure by yourself. Uh, it's very easy to do high interactivity prototypes. Well, in Invasion, you upload your designs into Invasion and build interaction based on that. It means you can have fabulous high visual fidelity prototypes that look exactly like your design. And you can create very basic interactions. I have example here. So here's an example I created earlier using Drupal.org. What I did was I just took a screenshot of Drupal.org sign-up screen and uh, did a bit of uh, upload to Invasion and uh, added a bit of interaction. As you can see, if I click on the username field, it fill up for me. And I click create new account and goes on and create new, new account. Uh, it's a very good tool to show to client because they can just go to common mode and say something like they say it's bad. Yeah, I don't know how to get out of this.
And the third tool I just discovered a few weeks ago is called Precursor. I love the simplicity of it. Compared with Axia and Invasion, it's just so simple and works on um, tablet. A quick example as well. So you have only five tools, but you can quickly put on your ideas and some text and um, share with, with whoever you want to share. It works on tablets, so it means you can actually draw with your hand. So here, um, digital prototyping tools. And of course, for all of us here, we can do prototyping Drupal. <coughs> well, Drupal is open source. It's free, and for all of us here, there's not much to learn. And uh, with the thing with digital prototyping and paper prototyping is that if you want to do a prototype that works on mobile and tablet and different devices, you need to create at least three of them. In Drupal, you create one, and by using a responsive framework, it works everywhere, especially with the framework such as Bootstrap, Foundation, and modules like Panels and um, Display Suit. It makes Drupal prototyping really easy. The advantage of Drupal prototyping is that you're using the exact technology with your final website. This is especially good for agile development. Uh, when you have a version of prototyping and you test it by the next, uh, by the end of this sprint, the designers get all the feedbacks from stakeholders and users, and then put it into the next iteration. Until the, the the final stage of the project, your final prototypes become your website. Another situation when Drupal prototyping can be useful is, in my opinion when you are creating one or two new design for an existing website. You already have all the nuts and bolts for the website. You have the views, you have the content types. You're just prototyping Drupal, get feedback, iterate, and then that's it. So now we have prototype, and we come to the most important part, which is testing. Uh, you, you user-centered design, the user feedback are the most important source of feedbacks, and the prototype allow us to put user testing at the beginning of the project rather than at the end of the project. So as designers, we shouldn't make any assumption that what works and what doesn't. All the conclusion, conclusions should be drawn from testing. In the ideal world of testing, we have real users sitting in front of us, um, stakeholders hiding behind some one-way glasses looking at us. We spent about one hour each session with a user. Um, we do at least five users a week. However, this is not always possible. And then online testing come to rescue. Um, I'm going to talk about a few types of online testing here. The first one is Usability Hub. Um, offers this five second test. Five second test is based on the principle that users only look at your design for five seconds. And if you fail to impress them, if you fail to make them take action, then you fail. So here's an example, again, using Drupal.org. What it does is it lets user look at a screen for five seconds only and ask them to answer a series of questions. Here I use Drupal.org homepage. Let user look at it for five seconds and ask them, um, what do you think this company does? I get um, a report of the answers. Um, and then from the report, I can see whether my key branding is getting through to the users. The second type of test is navigation flow test. It works by letting user accomplish a task by going through your navigation system. Um, here's an example. I have I let user to um, f try to find out a piece of content on my prototype. As you can see, at each stage, 
some people managed to do it, some people dropped off, and uh, this report showed me the average response time. This is great for testing whether you have a clear, uh, understandable navigation system. The third one is click test. Click test can be used to test your um, call to action buttons or newsletter sign up. An example here, I have this prototype, I have the newsletter sign up here. Oh, what's happening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I didn't do it. Uh, yeah, ignore it, as if it's not there. So yeah, my prototype is too awesome. It's good. <laughs> so yeah, I have this newsletter sign up button here, and uh, of course it's a very successful one. Nobody, well, only a few clicks elsewhere. But by doing this type of test, you can see whether your call to action is working or not. And the last one is this distraction test. This is used to test whether the key message on your web page is prominent enough or whether your page is too cluttered or too busy um, for people to really see what you're trying to see. So here's an example. On the left, we see users basically clicking all over the place. That means it's the page is either too busy or the key message is not prominent enough. Well, in conclusion, prototypes are important. It is one of the most important um, deliverables in UX design. And you might say, what if I don't want the whole full-on UX design process? I want lean UX. Well, prototype is in lean UX, prototypes shine even brighter because it helps you to avoid the most obvious mistakes. Just to do a low fidelity prototype, keep your focus on the key element, and uh, you can avoid making heavy, costly mistakes in later stages. Um, again, low fidelity prototypes sometimes are more effective than high fidelity one, and uh, the most important thing is we, we do usability testing thoroughly, don't make any assumptions. Thank you, that's all. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. Um, do you have any bootstrap specific tools that you like to use? Oh, yes. Um, I use bootstrap uh, when I'm creating prototyping Drupal. I have an example here. So this prototype is created in Drupal. I used the bootstrap um, theme uh, and the pa panels. No single line of code was written. And then you, you already can have all sorts of layout. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. Um, no, I haven't. Yeah, I'll definitely have a try. Um, this one, it's more power panels that deal with the layout and bootstrap that deal with, for example, the me media object, um, the thumbnail, the, um, what is it called, accordion stuff. Yeah, definitely foundation, that will work as well. It, it's the same principle. Have you had success with then showing this to, to clients and they're happy with seeing things demoed this way? Oh, we have project that worked like this, um, but that, like I said, that's building a new design on an existing website. So we show them a pretty basic um, demo like this, and then we can improve upon that. But with full project, um, 
a lot of times they would prefer to say a bit more than that. So I think in agile development that will really work. Any more questions? No? Okay, thanks.